Burned, Part 27, a Miraculous Ladybug fan fiction. If you've not heard the previous 26 parts of this story, you can find a link to them in the description box below. Today's theme is accident. If you haven't already, make sure you give a thumbs up and leave a comment to show your support. It's the best way to support content creators, after all. Now then, let's get burned. Something in the background beeped Adrian awake. Oh. White curtains. Where was he? He tried to sit up, but couldn't. He looked down, trying to figure out what he was wearing, but it wasn't anything he'd normally put on. What was... A hospital gown. Black? He whispered, looking down at his hand. His ring was gone. He thought he heard a page turn on the other side of the curtain surrounding him. Black? He tried again. He hadn't been alone for a long time, and he didn't realize how much he needed his Kwame's companionship until this moment. He couldn't move well, and he didn't know where he was. He was scared. Cat? A voice. Behind the fabric? Ladybug. Adrian still couldn't think straight. Ladybug? His voice sounded distant. Oh. He could hear relief in her voice. Why can't I move? Do you remember what happened? We were on a boat and... He traced through his memories. I slipped? You damaged some nerves in your... Oh, what's it called? Per perifu perif per perfect perfectual. <sighs> she tried to sound it out. Anyway, it'll heal, just like the bruises. So, you saw my face. I take it. Silence. He was right. She'd. No, it was pretty dark. How long have I been out? Not too long. Maybe 14 hours? Part of that was from the medicine you got. And maybe the pint and a half of blood you lost when you cut yourself on the way down. I'm told you were conscious in the trauma room. Yeah, no. I don't remember that. I'm not surprised. It's a relief to know you don't remember the mess I was. Over me? Yeah. Did you cry over me, bugaboo? I can hear you winking, cat. He tried to laugh, but ended up coughing. Wow. She wasn't kidding about the bruises. Oh, don't be so dramatic. You'll be discharged tomorrow. He looked up at the ceiling, thinking about himself. Hey, ladybug? Yeah? Could you hold my hand? She didn't reply, but after a moment he heard the squeak of metal against metal as the curtain moved. She reached out her hand to him, the rest of her hidden. Moving his arm was hard but he took her hand. Huh. What? He said. Some part of me expected your claws. Like my suit? Yeah. Sorry to disappoint? No, no. Nothing like that. Forget I said it. He wished he could see her. Would you transform? Huh? I want to see your face. <sighs> no. No? 
you'll deny the wishes of a guy who's in the hospital? He made sure his tone was playful. Then I'd see yours, so no. No faces. She squeezed his hand, rubbing her thumb across his forefinger. You just focus on getting better, okay? Where's my miraculous? In the C9, probably. I'll look for it, okay? If he could sit up, he would. Instead, he squeezed her hand, tears forming in his eyes. I need it back. Please, hurry. I can go now. No. Don't leave me alone. Please, don't. Don't leave me alone. Okay, okay, I won't. Just go back to sleep. I just woke up from a 14-hour nap. No thanks. So, what do you want to do then? Huh? She shifted her hand. Should we watch a movie? Or listen to a book or something? Yeah, that sounds nice. They spent a few hours listening to a Margaret Robertson book and holding hands, but they eventually talked over the narrator to swap stories of their own. As Adrian felt sleep settling in, he also felt comfortable. Yeah, he loved their relationship. Almost as much as he loved her. Thank you so much for listening. Part 28 is on its way. In the meantime, you can check out these other videos for more fanfiction. I'll catch you next time.